Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. Hey, babe. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Hey, Babe. Now, listen to me, okay? Sal is not here for this week and next week, and then... I believe he's coming back the week after. I know people get upset and they say, I'm not going to watch it unless Sal's on. Or I'm not going to watch it unless the both of you are on. Why are you guys even doing episodes if you're not both going to be there? I hear it. I hear what you're saying. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not listening. Because the reason why we're doing the episodes is because we like to do it, we need to do it, and we want to keep consistency. And there are times when one of us is out, like Sal is out, where we get the opportunity to have a fun guest come in and then just sit here and take the place of one of us and get new energy in the show and see if maybe Hey Babe will evolve into one day, for example, today, the Chris and Creighton Colin Quinn show. Yeah, Creighton Colin. Creighton, Creighton Colin, as he's known in the streets. Creighton that was Col a long intro. It was long-winded. I know the show. It was I get it. it okay, it our first topic, crinkle cut versus steak fries. <laughs> <laughs> I say crinkle cut. That was taste. That's taste buds. That's taste buds. They already told me. Yeah. This is Hey Babe, where we usually sing an intro song. You do? What's your favorite hey song? Hey Babe. What? You What's your favorite you song of all it? time? My favorite song is Hey Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You by Led Zeppelin. Oh, that is a good song. <laughs> Speaking of Led Zeppelin, I saw Pink last night. I got you, Hey Babe. What? You went to see Pink, you traitor? Sam was right next door at the Hulu Theater, and you went to see Pink. <laughs> no, it, Sam know, was Saturday so. while I was in Columbus, Ohio. Whoa. Whoa, the state capital. <laughs> right? I What's the capital Columbus. of Minnesota? Uh, Duluth. St. Paul. Oh. Jesus. What well, state I knew is it wasn't Minneapolis. In? What's that? What state is Creighton in? Nebraska. Hey, what's the capital of Nebraska? Omaha. Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> Um, I went. I just went and got coffee from Olenstein, the Danish bakery that we like. Oh, we like that place. Uh, shout out to Danish. But that was pretty considerate to get yourself coffee. None of us were sitting here with nothing. I asked. I asked Pimp if he wanted. Who knows when Venetia shows Why up? Why wouldn't you have texted and me <laughs> and said, "Hey, Carl, we know you like tea and Danishes. You like? Why would you have done that? Because I figured you were at Bubbly's. But you know what the problem is? The problem is not you. The problem is every. It is me. If I had a podcast, no, it's not. Because every morning show been like this. I've been yelling at every morning show from Opie and Anthony to Howard Stern since I started. You can look at the footage. And I always say the same thing. The only show that really knew how to treat morning guests, what really treated you like, I mean, it was amazing. Martha Stewart, of course. The best Martha Stewart. When she had a morning Stewart. show, you show up, they go, okay, we have this, this. They bring you a whole thing. A girl would come in with the interns and go, this is this. Here's a drink. Everything was set up perfectly. Right. It's beautiful. I never got a chance to do the Martha Stewart show, but I did do Howard Stern. But my point is, well, um, that's not what it's about. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. If you take your glasses off, I'll take mine off. No, I don't put mine on. I don't really need them right now. Look, but yeah, speaking of which, by the way, I'm glad we bring it up. Like that. My, my, my first move, I've been doing a pimp. I've been torturing pimp about my hour for like a long time. And uh, by the way, pimp now officially the unseen hand of show business. Yes. Like um, of comedy. Let's just say comedy. Yes. Yes. You know why? Because he has the power because he's not doing it for the money. He wants money like anybody else. He's probably like, please don't say that. He wants money, but he's not in it for the money. Beautiful. He's the unseen power. Passion, which is very similar to Pink. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you're talking to one of the few people that actually saw Pink in concert. So I can have this conversation. You saw Pink? Yeah, at the Barclay Center like six years ago. My wife wanted to go see Pink. So go ahead. You start, and then well, I'll add my little comments about Pink. It, you're talking to one of the few people that seen her. Well, Pink, well, I mean, she sells a lot of tickets. I mean, she's sold out tour, Pink. Well, of course. She's Pink, yeah. It's Pink. All the shows. What's are, her real name? We don't know. I think it's Alicia, right? Alicia Keys. You're right. Alicia Keys. Um, Alicia. Alicia Beth Moore. Oh. Um, she. Uh, the 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 show. The show was unbelievable. She flies all around. Um, I I didn't eat last night, but I did have three vodka sodas. Oh. So I'm feeling a little hungover, a little drowsy. Today. Right. But that's nothing. Pimp's been. He's exhausted too. 
We're all tired here. Listen, first of all, you just how could you just cut off the pink conversation? Here's your problem. I literally said the one person in comedy that's ever seen pink, and you go, and pink was great. She flies around, but I'm a little hungover. But so's pimp. What's your problem? I, my pro- what is your problem? My problem. <laughs> it's it's new blood pressure medicine. <laughs> Well, I saw her fly around, too. Now, you know, she broke her back in Berlin like 10 years ago doing those high wire acts. She does, she does like a whole acrobatic show. She's singing. It's really great. She's singing. She's flying across the audience like dangerous acrobatics. Right. And there's like a thousand little girls and soccer moms singing along with her. And me. And me and you. Right. <laughs> she they she that fell haircut, off you know. this. This had happened live on the show. Yeah, this was in Germany. She because broke, this was, she this broke is, her back. This is how I've never seen this because this is how she this is how she ends the show and it's unbelievable the way she ends. She sings um her famous song. What's her famous song? She has a few famous songs. Oh shit. The one with the guy from Fun? That was in front of the whole show. Right? No, she fell off the thing, yeah. Jesus Christ. And she fell off the wire and broke her back. And she, oh my God, yeah, no, she, um, this show, it's Germany, yeah, and and it's amazing that I didn't know that how she still gets back up and did it. All these years later, that's the key. That's the key. If you bomb and stand up, you gotta get back up. It's not the same as breaking your back and crying on a high wire, but still, <laughs> gotta get back up. I, um, yeah, my daughter was upset. Uh, my daughter was upset last night because I didn't have sushi in the in the garden when we went. And I said, "This we're raising a spoiled child." Oh, She's she wanted sushi. She's angry about the sushi. She wasn't happy about seeing pink? She did. No, she loved seeing pink. And then her. You didn't give her any vodka and sodas, did you? No. Oh, but good. I did. What, what happened is, is I did, because I got drunk, I did <laughs> spill a vodka soda all over. And then my daughter's jacket fell in it. Uh-oh. So then she wore that jacket on the train that was just laced with vodka soda all over her See, sleeves. That's what people don't understand. That's a real New Yorker. He understands, even though it's night, it's 10 30, it's Sunday night, he knows his daughter's got to get used to the train. Because you took a car, would have took you. Two hours to get home. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we took the we took the we took the subway. My daughter's been on the subway uh, yeah. uh, many times. She said, um, "I told you that." She said, "I said this train, you know, it's subway. I said it's for the public." Cause she was like, "Why are there so many people on this train?" I said, "It's for the public. This is the public train." She was like, "Do they have Catholic trains?" Well, that was a good. Oh, that's was a, a good, good one. Quick. I was like, "Yeah." Was she was saving that for the act. Well, I got yeah, I got nothing in the act. The marathon <laughs> was yesterday. Oh yeah, the New York City Marathon. Do you, could you ever see yourself running it? Oh my God, no! I can't. I mean, when I used to smoke cigarettes, I used to go running sometimes like five miles. That was the best I could ever do. Five it. miles? Yeah. I don't think I ever even got to five miles. It's pretty impressive, but it was crazy. I know. I came in yesterday from and the, just the fans, the enthusiasm. They're all out there cheering with these beautiful green, black, and white flags and red flags cheering. Right. They were screaming really intensely passionate about the whole thing. It was really great. About the, yeah, yes, yes, about about the Palestinian marathon. Oh, that's what it was. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, um, yeah, the marathon might, was from the river to the sea. Where, where, how they run it? I forget the route. The route? It Nothing. Goes, it starts in my ex-home borough of Staten Island. I just Island. said the, from the river to the sea. That was supposed to be a joke. And you go, well, it starts in my... What do you mean from the river to the sea? Oh, forget it. If you don't get that joke, I don't want to talk about it. Damn it. <laughs> well, we're going to get to history because I'm reading a book that's proven we're lied to about American history, and it's bothering me. Um, we're lied about America. We're lied to. Paul Revere lie. Oh, come on. It's a lie. Thomas Jefferson lie. What? Yes. He didn't have wooden teeth. He, mean, he didn't sleep with the slaves? Yo, well, no, that he did. Oh, uh, who? The yeah. negative parts are true, and the bad, and the positive yes. parts are lies. But it's just a whole thing. What a coincidence! Oh, give me a break. <laughs> um, <laughs> um <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> what did he do if he if he didn't help with the? Uh, well, no, it's just Paris? that it's just that they were saying that you know how we were taught that he wrote the Declaration of Independence and it was all kind of his idea oh. and all that and like he was the the founding father, the wise one that wrote right, all, none of right. it's true. He, he's borrowed it from. Other people, there was a Declaration of Independence in in like the state of Massachusetts that he borrowed from, and then it was like a there was like ten guys that wrote it, but he's the one that got the credit. Are you sure you're not he's talking about Edison. the con- you're not talking about the Connecticut Constitution, right? Because uh, remember they had the Connecticut Constitution before we came up with the Constitution. No, the Declaration a- of Independence is, was based on that other thing, you know. On the, um, uh, I think it was Roger Magna Carta. Hornsby, What's on that? the Magna Carta, yeah, yeah, not far from there. But but the Constitution, the Connecticut Constitution. They had it beforehand, but that's a well-known thing, you know. It's a well-known thing. Well, yeah. But you're right; they don't get the kind of credit they should. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, we saw something about Tesla today. Speaking of Edison, 
What do you say? What happened? I don't know. I just saw something on social media about him. He oh, probably like Joe Rogan psycho. shooting the arrow at the new Tesla. What? Joe Rogan no, shot No, I an saw arrow. the guy Tesla. Oh, Nikolai Tesla. His face, yeah. Right here for this fun fact, Nikolai Tesla killed himself or died in the New Yorker Hotel, and we used to film the MTV show Guy Code and Girl Code at the New Yorker Hotel on the second floor, and the cameraman said they did not like filming there because they believe it was haunted by Tesla's ghost, and the cameras used to shut off in the middle of filming. so It, it, it disrupted filming of Guy Code and Girl Code so much that MTV had to pay to move studios. Wow, that is, so that is a fun fact. That hotel is creepy. It is something creepy. about it, you know? Yeah, I mean... It, I feel like a lot of stuff happened there, you know? Look at this. Midtown, lower Manhattan foot traffic down 33%. Unbelievable. Oh. Well, a lot of people are not... Well, I'm not walking because I have an Achilles injury. Oh, you do? It won't... Have you ever had Achilles tendonitis? I No, I, I tore my Achilles. You tore your Achilles? Yeah. How? I told you that story. No, but tell it I was it again. on Adam Sandler's movies, one of his movies... And we were Booby shoot does Halloween. But <laughs> before that, <laughs> so it was one of those other ones. And we're on the set of the we're on the set play. You know, he plays basketball all the time. Right. He, right. And he goes, "Do you want to play?" And I go, "Yeah." And I start playing, and the whole, I'm being covered by Joe Vesey. You know, Joe Vesey, the, up. the legend. Joe Vesey, the his father, Peter Vesey, yeah. legendary sports. And he's player. a he's a great and one player. Yes, great ball player. Yes, I love Joe Vesey. And so I shoot, I score. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm not that old. And the next play, I get the ball. I run, and I go here, pop, and I pop my Achilles. But the good ball was, it was on the set. It was in the ho this house, the house with a mansion with a godfather horse's head scene. That exact house. That exact house. It's the best house in L.A. It's right above Sunset. Oof. It's this beautiful mansion. The guy had six black-clad, like, assassin uh, bodyguards in the house right. at all times because it's such big property. Right. That you have these woods and stuff. He had six guys that were like, you know. And so when it popped, was it just excruciating pain right there? No, it, was, it hurt, but it was more scary than painful. What did you do then? How did you rehab it? You have to get I, surgery? I didn't rehab it the way I was supposed to. I had surgery, and then they say, you got to go to rehab. And I went for a few weeks, but then I just stopped. And they go, don't stop. They go, everybody stops, and they never get completely better. I go, I won't stop. I stopped. And is it completely better? No. <laughs> Still, I know this Achilles. It's so. It's so. Um, every time I walk, it's like this intense, intense pain. But what can you do? There's nothing you can do sometimes, Colin. You, uh, if you're saying what can you do, then we none of us have any hope. Oh, because I used to be a physical therapist. Yes. I forgot everything now. <laughs> he goes, Ah, what can you do? What do you? What is it? 1930. I know. I you're like you. Like somebody's uncle, like, ah, what can you do? It's like, no, you went to physical therapy. I know. You should, there I are things you could do. I forgot everything. I forgot. I went through three and a half years of a doctorate level program. I swear to God, I don't know how to do anything. But, I would, if you were like, oh, I hurt my ACL, I would probably do whatever the well, rehab is, is the opposite way. Yeah, but meanwhile, here you are complaining because you have a little ACL problem. You're popping down bike and shoulders. You're not listening. And here comes, <laughs> and here comes Pink. She broke her back, and she actually did enough work to come back. There's a picture of Pink right there, I think. No, that's, oh, no, Mark, that's Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Well, either way, look at him. He was trying to fight. Tore his ACL while sparring. Luis Gomez. But that's the problem. He, you know, when you're a nerd, you really shouldn't be trying to get ready for a real fight. Yeah, you really shouldn't. And I think, you know, I, I think like you know th these ACLs. Everybody's starting to tear. Their ACLs now. Everyone's starting to get more injured. I think uh, I saw something that because of the types of food we're eating and because of the types of like CrossFit and things like that we're doing, yeah. you think we're getting stronger, but we're actually prone, making ourselves prone to more injury. Well, maybe uh, Trump was right. There's Trump. There maybe is. Trump was right in that he's a. Uh, remember, he's like, I never worked out. I eat only only yeah. eat vegetables. Yeah. Like Sam Roberts from Jim now, and Sam. Now here's the question: Only vegetables. Colin. Yes, See, he looks like a vegetable, Sam Roberts. <laughs> yeah. He looks like a squash. Um, so, <laughs> so, so here's the question, though. With potential World War III coming, yes. it's, it's potential that, that things are bubbling. <laughs> the United States government has hinted at potentially bringing back a draft. Now, my question to you is, yeah. with the draft, yeah. will then gender matter? Will then oh. people start saying, well, you know what, I actually am a woman. And I'm not. I'm not. Get, I can't get drafted. What What will people say about gender then? Well, but I mean, it's not that people are saying they're not. A, they're saying I actually am a woman now. But I'm saying, will they go back to? Will they? Will they? 
What do we got? U.S. Congress moves closer to making women register for the draft. Yeah. Oh, women register, yeah. Because then what happens, though? But what if you're a, but my question is with the draft, you have men, you have women, but then what happens if you're a non-binary? Do you get drafted? How do you get around sure. these rules now? That's How the issue. You, yeah, where where are you where are you in the barracks? Really is the question. That's what it yeah. But if it comes down to a war like that, everybody's gone. You know what I mean? Would you go? I'm too old. No, but what if they said, you know what, we need everybody? I would love it. You would do it. Yeah, something to do. How about today? How about today? I'm going to Florida. Uh, I'm get, I get off the train. I get off the train, uh, Long Island Railroad, and I see there's a homeless woman, and she's, she's, you know, people walking past her, and she goes, could somebody buy me a water? All I want is a water. And everyone's walking past her, so I stopped. And I was like, all right, I'll get her a water. So I get two Poland Springs, and she goes, I wanted a Pellegrino. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. That's gold. And so I made I I gave it back, and then the lady gave me a Pellegrino, and I had to pay like a eighty five cent difference. First of and all, she didn't even say thank you. To, it's the greatest it's the greatest New York story of all time. It's true. It, but at the same time, it also reminds me. Yet some anonymous person. Yet when he goes to Ole and Steen around the corner, he doesn't get me a tea. <laughs> they do have good Danishes. That reminds there. me of the old joke, by the way. Tell me. So the. The guy selling pencils, the blind guy. They used to have blind guy sell pencils on the, you know, in front of the stores. And there's a businessman every day he gives the guy twenty five cents and doesn't take a pencil for thirty years. He just gives the guy twenty five cents, never takes a pencil. And then one day the guy goes to him, "Excuse me, sir." And he goes, "I know what you're gonna ask me. Why do I every day give you twenty five cents? And I never take a pencil." He goes, "No, I just wanted to tell you the price of pencils went up to fifty cents." <laughs> it's like that lady. There it is. Smart. I like it. I like a good street joke. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why the hell not? It doesn't matter. What are you doing today? What do you got? Do you act like it's in my act. You go, it doesn't matter. I'm just telling it casually. You I act know. like I committed some <laughs> faux pas on this goddamn show. Okay? <laughs> Sorry I'm not talking about latte versus pumpkin spice like those other two hacks, Joe DeRosa <laughs> and Sal Volcano. <laughs> okay? Oh, my God. If you, Joe heard you say that, he'd be so upset. He's I like, everybody's got, everybody only talks about me for their material. It was Whoa. furious. He came in. I was talking to Ian Fidance on the show the other day, and we were talking about <laughs> something with Joe, and then Joe barges into the show. He goes, would you even have an act if it wasn't for making fun of me? Good point. I was like, shut up. Joe's Go back right. To your house in Pennsylvania, it's stiff. Well, Joe's got the house. He's got his own side businesses. He's doing good. We might start doing the podcast, man. Something you should do it from the same. I would do it from the sandwich shop. I would do it from the sandwich shop too. I would like so there's that. There's a little more energy and excitement. Why not? And then as as don't try to steal my idea. I'm going to tell Joe. I'm going to say, Joe, me and you should do a podcast. He's going to say no. The bo <laughs> what? Yeah, I guarantee you, he's going to say no, man. We bake the bread there. <laughs> it's not good for the roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk Joe into doing it for the sandwich shop. You can. I'm going to say, Joe, I've never done a podcast. I hate podcasts. I'm going to do one with you. Only if we do it from your sandwich shop and we have sandwiches. I went to Colin Quinn's apartment for the first time two weeks ago. Lovely, lovely space. Yeah. Lovely we space. We do a podcast there. Big. What? You, we have the room. You, have you know room. we could do there, actually? What? My apartment. A bowl, You could put a bowling alley there because it's about the length of a... a it a, is. That bowling part. It is. I felt as soon as I walked in, I I wanted to roll something down right down that it's alley. It's got that thing. But well, when I had the torn Achilles, I had the little bike, and I would just roll down. And when you asked your wife to, if you could put it in a bowling alley, what was her answer? I've asked her for all those kinds of things. She's just like, she just looks at me like, her mouth turns down in disgust. <laughs> Even though she knows I'm joking, she knows I'm half joking. And she just has that slight disgust. Yeah. Your wife likes me, though. Your wife, I'm accept. Your wife She does like me. you, yeah. That's good. Hey. That's what you want. You want you want to be accepted. You want to be the guy who's accepted. You don't want to be the guy who people's wives are like. I don't like you hanging out with that guy. You want no, to be the but, guy like you know. But I feel like my wife, like a lot of women, do like you. But they know, you know what I mean. They can sense. They have a, they know who's up to something. They know that they, they know right. you. We're all on trust. You know what I mean. They right. They can sense who's a goddamn you know. Well, I got my new. So thing. I don't think they like anyone likes you that much. They all know you. Have, Probably. Right? Well, here's my new thing. What I've been doing is, is this, <laughs> you know me, I love to travel. Viator is the only app that I use when I'm going to a new city or a new country. I love to go on walking tours, on history tours. I love to do all that stuff. Viator is the only app that I use. It is, I've, I've found so many tours that I'm like, this is the best tour I've ever had in my life. And I only go to Viator. It could be funny, touching, silly, transformative, anything you want. I mean, it literally any type of you know, tour experience you're looking for. That's all, all you need. 
Viator's travel experiences have millions of real travel reviews, so you have the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. Over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries. There is something for everyone. They offer everything from simple tours to extreme adventures. All you got to do is download the Viator app right now and use the code Viator10. That's V I A T O R 1 0 for 10% off your first booking in the app. One app, 300,000 travel experiences. You'll remember, do more with Viator. Listen, I don't want you to have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. That's why I'm telling you, use Game Time. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They have killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, view from your seat, and the best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I love that you see the view before your seat before I love that you see the view of your seat before you buy. You know exactly what to expect when you arrive. There are no surprises unless Joe DeRose is sitting in front of you. And the game time guarantee, I love that this is the best part. You always get the best price. Here's what they do. If you find the tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. It is the best. You buy tickets in seconds with two taps. All the prices show in total right up front. It's a beautiful thing. So go ahead right now and download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code HEYBABE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code H-E-Y-B-A-B-E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Tomorrow. I am in the Dania Beach Improv. It's going to be great down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, tomorrow, Friday, and then shows on Saturday. And then the following week, we are in New Haven, Connecticut, Thursday, Providence, Rhode Island, Friday, Medford, Massachusetts, Saturday. All those shows are almost sold out. Then we have Phoenix, Arizona, December uh, second, uh, December 1st and 2nd, that Friday, Saturday, Phoenix, Arizona, um, back at the... Um, Stand Up Live, which is a great venue. Um, I've been there a couple of times before, but I'm doing my brand new hour. Going to do a bunch of, got some crowd work, got some new bits you haven't heard, so go check it out. And then Salt Lake City and Denver, all those shows are almost sold out. And then we added the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles and a show in San Diego in January, chrisdcomedy.com for tickets. I'm really proud of this hour, so come have fun and love your life. Is, is this... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's my new thing. <laughs> it's great. Okay. Well, well, I accept that. Here's my new thing. Now listen. Yeah. So what, what I've been doing to stay safe. You took your glass off and I put mine on. Oh, yeah, well, that means I'm well, gonna like put mine this. on then. Go ahead. We'll never this, oh. the promise of this oh, episode is one of us will always have our glasses on. That's <laughs> a promise we can make to our viewers. <laughs> um so so the new thing I've been doing to stay yeah. safe is I go yeah. on the road, right? And this takes away the temptation is I'll see a girl right. or maybe sometimes multiple women and I'll take pictures of them in my head and I'll just snapshot them in my head. And then I go back to the hotel room <laughs> and then I get completely butt naked and I pull a, a chair up in front of a mirror, lube myself up, lube up everything. And then I have a nice masturbation session with just me and the multiple women in my head. And then I wake up the next morning and nobody gets hurt. I got interesting. I'm not I'm not cheating. I'm not affecting them. They're in my brain and they're they're locked in there forever, but there's nothing you can do about that. And then I have a nice I have a nice moment with myself. And I it thought it was good. I thought it was <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like I I look at them, I lock in my head and I go, Oh, if I'm with her for four years, she's gonna be busting my balls about this. Yeah. If I'm with this one for three years, yeah. She's going to wake up and just be like, uh, she had a bad breath that day and she's going to be cursing me out about something. Well, I, was, I thought it was that. I do say, though, I, I am at the age now, I guess, you know, we, you and I have spoken about this before. Where I do look at, like, you know, when you're like, oh, you know, that woman right there. And then you just think about how exhausting it would be to try to start over. Right. That, that's that's my main motivation right now for that's good. just staying with one, the same one. I'm like, it's too exhausting to do anything. I'm exhausted. I, th I think that uh, really... Oh, that whole story, not only was it, here you, just let me say if I got this correctly, you yes. lube yourself up naked in a chair, but you're in front of a mirror. Yes. 
It makes so it you're not real. looking at those girls. You're watching yourself whack off. Right. Where are the girls? It sounds like just a narcissist who's jerking off to his own image in the mirror. Well, because the left side of my chest looks like a woman's tit, so I like to see it. <laughs> I mean, there's no woman. There's no visual. I it's know. Just, hey, sometimes guys get in there, too. I like it that you're old school, though. You actually can just conjure up the real woman. That's how we used to jerk off back in the old days. Because there was no porn. There was no porn. No, you, t- yeah, you. I, I'm barely, I'm barely, uh, I'm barely on porn anymore. I just, yeah, porn is crazy. It's, it's ridiculous. It's too much. It's, 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 uh, th- yeah, porn is, 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 has lost. The I remember I was in my early twenties in my apartment, and the girl I was seeing, she comes over, and I, I put a, I had a porn tape in, there, and she goes, "What's that?" And I go, "Porn." And she goes, "What?" And I put it on, and she goes, "What the hell is wrong with you?" I go, "What?" She goes, "You watch this." I go, "Yeah, porn." Like I thought it was so normal. Yeah. Natural. <laughs> I was like Travis Bickle when he brings you to the porn theater. Yeah. In taxi driver. Well, there used to be one porn VHS tape. It was called the, the the Spanish porn. We had it amongst our friends. It was a blue VHS cassette tape. Yeah, VHS, right? VHS, and everybody would pass it around. And then I got, I'm, I think I told the story before. I'm the one that got caught with it. My mother caught me with the oh. tape, and she smashed it up into a million pieces. And I woke up the next morning, and there was a post that said, get this filth out of my house. And then I had to tell our friend Frankie that I'm the idiot who lost the porn. Right. And they still bring that up to this day. That, that's the so bad that about it? Spanish porn. Well, it's like my mother, when I was dealing, I was dealing weed. Ooh. And my mother found the weed in my house. And, you know... She, she had heard of weed. It was the 70s. But she goes, you're a f- drug dealer. You're a drug dealer. I go, it's weed. It's a different story. And she goes, well, don't worry about it. I flush it down the toilet. I go, you're going to get me killed. killed. Yeah. <laughs> Sergio Chacon's going to come and beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio Chacon in hot water. Go check out the uh, the <laughs> series. What is the series called? Block by block. Block by block. block, by block. I was telling Pimp, one of my favorite series, and I proposed an idea of what about Block by Block to Ridgewood Queens? Yeah, we do you in, in Metropolitan Avenue or something. Metropolitan, well, Myrtle Avenue. Metropolitan <laughs> Avenue is the other gang, but we're the Myrtle boys. We, uh, we will do it. Myrtle, yeah. Block by Block, mm-hmm. old school German architecture called St. Matthias Church. This episode uh, with Sergio, the uh, Lower East Side, was, um, great. was awesome. I love it, Block by Block. Going around. Yeah. Each, and I like the one you guys did on the Upper West Side with the guy... Or was it the Upper East Side? It was one of the first ones. Yeah. There was, that, there was Hell's Kitchen and Upper East Side. That guy that guy from the neighborhood was yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. I love... I watched this, too, when you were talking about uh, uh, your comedy special that everyone knows. All the comedians know. The Pittsburgh Pirates jacket yeah, comedy Pirates special. Yeah, Pirates jacket, yeah. Which was good. And now I found out when watching that, you pretty much improv most of that. And you weren't on the... You hadn't done any sets at all for months before that. That was the first time on stage yeah. in March. Yeah. I, I, I was so... That's why I had to kind of jump down in the crowd and play around and do crowd work. You were you were blanking on material. I was crowd work, but I knew I was before I got up there. Why? Like I wasn't blanking. I knew I was like I'm screwed this this half hour. Why? But what? But I you had no choice. You had to do it. What's that? You had no choice. You had to do it. I had to do it, especially in those days. It was like, you had no choice. Which is interesting because you're the guy now in stand up who like you're at the club every night. Like you're yes. the comedy connoisseur. But here then you were like ah. F- yeah, connoisseur is the wrong word. But um. I was doing a lot of crowd work. I just wanted to do a C with a C. <laughs> uh, man, I cooked yesterday. How about Yo's that? Yo's or ring dings? French um, onion pasta. You did? Yep, and I've been making different types of salmon dishes. French onion pasta? Ready for this? That sounds bad. What do you think of this? Ready for this? Here's what I did. Gross. Cut up spinach. Cheese. Spinach, like, you know, fresh spinach, tomatoes, put the salmon in the middle, then I put onion and chive cream cheese on the salmon. Hold on. Cream cheese ruined it. Onions, no, onions and peppers. Then I put it in the oven, preheat the oven 350 degrees, put the salmon in for about 20 minutes. Simultaneously, I got water boiling. I poured in tricolor rotini pasta. Okay. Then the salmon cooked. I took the rotini pasta out. I mixed it all together and I made like a salmon, onion, cream cheese pasta with spinach and tomatoes, and the kids loved it. Yeah, the kids loved it. Me and you went to the show on an empty stomach because you didn't want to eat it. No, I did eat it. I you ate said it you all. Had an empty stomach. And then I made a pumpkin. The and then I made a pumpkin pie dip. Wow. Vanilla instant pudding mix, pumpkin pie spice, um, maple syrup, pumpkin puree, and yeah. chocolate chips. That sounds weird, but I guess it's good. It was good. I and then you're such a cook. I did, but I don't like those. Away. I don't like all that cream in your food. What it sounds you, like you're into northern Italian cooking. I don't go for that shit. What do you like? I like 
like old school red sauce Italian food Ooh. and Spanish seafood. I like seafood with pasta with any kind of a red sauce or I like that. garlic and oil or anything like that. Here's the predicament I'm in. What? Jasmine, my girl, oh. makes amazing sauce, but her ex-boyfriend taught her how to do it. How do you deal with that? What do you mean? What does that bother you? I guess it should. Is your ex-boyfriend Italian? I think so. You don't even know. Yeah. Sounds like he's really not a, a predicament in your end. Yeah. Sounds I was like just trying to make conversation for the show. Oh, Something. sorry. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to raise the stakes. <laughs> raise the stakes. <laughs> but everybody knows you're not the jealous type. We're not jealous type. I'm really not. Well, to the point where I think it's, I don't care. I'm not jealous um, of any, uh, I, I, I just don't, well, with relationships, I just don't care. If somebody cheated on me, I would be like, great. Yeah, I was always like that. You were now, like that. Let me, but let's talk about something more important, which is my new hour. So here's my big plan. I'll just tell you the beginning of it, okay? The big plan, which is to shave my beard, because the white in my beard is really, I, I look like death. I look like, and the, the sad thing is, Tom, what are you saying? No. I think you look great. Thanks. But what about on camera? Can I call it, you know, one thing I like about the Taliban, probably the only thing, was the Taliban used to, the old guys would color their beard red, purple. They used berries. They didn't even have to spend money on it. Look what it. if I color my beard like Taliban type <laughs> colors? I like that. I don't tell people it's Taliban. I like that. I think. I wait, what don't you like about the white beard? I feel like it looks good. You look like uh, mature. <sighs> I trust you. You're a leader. Wait a minute. What did Tom Papa say about it? Oh, Tom Papa said, Sourdough listen. Sourdough Tom. We were having a big one of those. The comedy seller. We have these comedy seller dinners. Once every couple of years. Yeah, I got invited to one, and they never got invited back. Yeah, invited to one, <laughs> and they test people out like the audition one person each dinner. Chris came. I didn't think he did that badly. Okay. Colin vouched for me. I was Colin's pick, and what, I thought I thought he did well. What what lost his vote? Um, he wasn't like he would start with his Chrissy energy, but then halfway through he would kind of. Lose it. He will lose confidence and wilt. He will because because what they call I, him yeah. Because the thing is, the his thing, nickname is Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt, yes. <laughs> Wilt the, the Stilt. Wilt the Stilt. <laughs> that, because the thing was, is it was it was Colin, you know, Bobby Kelly, Keith Robinson, Jim Norton, right? Esty from the Comedy Cell. So they all hit each other with like good jokes, making fun of each other. Me right. as a new guy can't come in and then start making fun of them. It's disrespectful. So you kind of have to just listen. But the the the, the catch twenty two with that dinner <laughs> is you got to come out and start killing. But it's it's if you do it and you and you you're gonna piss somebody off and disrespect a comedy elder. So I just figured I'm just gonna sit here and say nothing and slowly just wean myself out and then. I said, well, enjoy this one dinner, and then I'll never get invited back. He's right. He, he's one hundred percent right. Yeah, I can't deny it. He's one hundred percent right. But um, but anyway, Tom Papa, who's really organized the dinner every time, even though no one pays. Right. Tom's like, is everybody down for dinner this week? And we're like, okay, fine. So this time he came, and Tom, Tom was on fire, and he just nailing people. He's, he was, you know, Tom's got an edge to him. He does, and he goes. And Colin, why don't you shave? You don't have to let everybody know you gave up. <laughs> and then I was like, wow. Whoa. I looked like I, it was a good one. I had to laugh. But also, I was like, does it look like you gave up? Does it look like you? If you don't shave, I'm like, uh, what's her name? Carrie Bradshaw. If you don't shave, does it look like you gave up? Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think I think it looks good. I think it looks good. You to, you're the one who told me. You texted me two weeks ago. Maybe this was after dinner. Now it's starting to make sense. You texted me out of nowhere. I said, "What are you doing today?" You said, "Preparing for the final chapter of my career." Well, the final chapter is yeah. I want to do a special. I want to do a well. We'll talk about this. I don't even want to talk about it on the air. But I want to do a big special to end it all. I got an, I got the name for it. Special Weschel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Um, well, I um. I like the beard. I think the beard's fun. I think the beard's in. Yeah. Pimp's got a nice beard. Pimp's got a big. Yeah, pimp. it's it's not white. If it was white, it would be wild. Pimp's beard would. Mike Cannon has gray hair. He's young. Gray is different. Yours, I would call that gray. Yeah, but on camera, this looks white right down the, the bottom. The bottom line is this. What does your wife think? That's the only thing that matters. For the first time, I asked her last night about it. And she goes like this. She goes, 
well, I mean, it is pretty white. And I was Ooh. like, wow. Wow. And then didn't say, and then just continued on. Yeah, she didn't want to say it. On. She did not say it. It's like, if, it's right up there with like, I'd have to see you without it. Then you're like, oh, that person oh, hates boy. you what you're wearing. If somebody goes, I'd have to see you without that. And you're like, oh, Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to do it. So you're going to shave the beard? No, I don't know. What about what about going the other way and just growing it as long as you can? How, oh, how, I hate that David Letterman look. Mm. That looks psychotic. You think so? Well, now I you're mean, not going to get on his Netflix show. I don't know how much more I could have put into now it. Now you're not going to get What's on his Netflix show. What's you would have had the opportunity to interview Zelensky and you screwed it up. What do you mean, Zelensky? Letterman interviewed Zelensky. From he did? A, I can't believe Zelensky's still alive. Why? Everyone thought he was going to be dead two years ago. The guy's living. I know. Meanwhile, Putin, you know, is in trouble. Vladimir. He's sick. Is Hope he? he gets better. What happened? I'm yeah. um, what's that? Um, well, speaking of Putin, U.S. Pentagon announced nuclear bomb 24 times more powerful than the one dropped in Japan. What's the difference? How It doesn't need to be. It's going to eviscerate us. And when was this? Today? Today. That we have it? We got it. 24. So why are you saying it's going to eviscerate us? Hopefully we won't aim it ourselves. Right, but I would think the nuclear fallout, as I've learned on the show Chernobyl oh. on HBO, oh. is... is um, It'll be over here? Yeah, just like the dinosaurs. It won't hit us. It could. We're, we're lucky where we live. It's true. When those smoke, when that smoke came from Canada, yeah. I go, what the hell? Even Canada's attacking us. Well, we got the oceans, man. We geographically. We are geographically oh, in great shape. It. Brand new sweatshirt from Lululemon. I spilled coffee on it. Damn. That's the problem. Wait now a minute. what? We got to come up with an invention that's on your phone that can take all those little... Pesky wow. stains out. Like an app that, that'll, yes. that'll like laser it off. Yes. Hmm. It's like a barcode laser. Right. On your phone. And if bar if we're speaking of bars of soap, we only go with Dr. Squatch. Dr. Squatch? Or Dr. Sasquatch. Is it Dr. That's Squatch? That's cool, soap? Dr. Sasquatch. Dr. Squatch soap. It's awesome. Go use the promo code. Hey babe. Dr. S Dr. Squatch? I think it's good Dr. Squatch or Dr. Sasquatch soap, I've but never it's heard amazing. Your name. Um Dr. Squatch. Uh great soap. Um what else? What what I texted you, pimp. What did I want to? There was something else, an article or something I wanted to bring up to Colin. Okay, the the we well, said yes, oh the the shipwreck, the Columbia. How about this? The holy grail of shipwrecks, twenty billion dollars of sunken treasure. They say, Colin, there's more money lost in the ocean than we have in circulation right now. Twenty billion is not that much in circulation. No, but that's just one little part of the ocean. They're gonna really? find. They're going down to some shipwreck, and the problem is, the the governments have said if you can go down and get the the treasure, it's yours. And they said there's billions of dollars down there. So Colombia's president right now, they're going down to get this uh, twenty billion dollars sunken treasure, and the the question is, who does it go to? The government, the people, the cartels. That's why. <laughs> that's who it should go to. Well, it'll probably go to whoever goes down there. We Would need you go down good, there and get that money? We need some good... Were you a swimmer in high school? Um, no. I always run into some people that go, yeah, I was a swimmer. And I'm like, it's so weird to be a swimmer in high school. But some people were. Yeah. It, I do you think it it's strange? Well, I went to a... We didn't even have a pool in my no, school. No, me neither. No, in New York, we don't have activities like that. No, you don't have swimming and stuff like that too much, no. right, in New York. No, because what am I going to do? Go swim in the... It you're not going to go in the ocean water. I'm, what am I right. going to go all the way out to Montauk to swim? Well, you go to Rockaway back in those days. Yeah, but not well. Manhattan Beach. We used to go to Coney Island all the time. But we didn't really swim that much. I went to Jones Beach. Uh, I would mostly go to Jones Beach or yeah, Rockaway. Rockaway I go to beach. Brighton and Coney Island, right there. Hey, we're the Beach Boys. Yeah. Look at that. That's yeah. a good name for our, our, our podcast. podcast. Me and Joe's new sandwich podcast. Yes, the Beach Boys. <laughs> um, Ryanair. You ever flown it? Ryanair? No, I never heard of it. That's the one in, in England. I mean, in the UK or wow. Europe. They fly, they fly all over Europe. Cheap flights, sardine can seating on planes will soon be the norm. Look at them. Look, they got all these levels of, of seats just kind of That looks like people. those C-130. You ever go on the military flights where they just strap you all in together? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well this is AI's prediction of how... Air travel will evolve in the next. Well, look. Of, you know. Well, they have they wow. have air travel. AI makes predictions. Think about that. Well, well AI, AI makes is also in charge of rent now. Really? Yeah. All the landlords tap into AI. That's why the prices are going up. Wow. AI is in charge of podcast ads. AI will go through a podcast ad, and if you don't hit it the way that they've programmed it, you will lose money on the. the you'll get demonetized. It's a whole pro. <sighs> AI's. So I am a fan of Doctor Squatch. It's the <laughs> best soap around. So if you use their voice, they'll be like, hey, this guy's in the They team. like it. He's one of us. Yeah. 
They AI. They look. They generated nude images of girls at a New Jersey high school and triggered police probe, but well, it wasn't what real. <laughs> well, um, why is what it a picture of? The, why does it say nude girls and it's a picture of the Pope? I dressed in one Pimp, of those uh, jack, you know, he's got a... Pimp likes to throw that in there once in a while as a deep fake. <laughs> well, AI, that is a deep fake. AI's yeah. making images of the Pope do weird stuff. Right, Trump. he's in, he's in yeah. one of those jackets. The, uh, so they're look. just, yeah, they're just trying to show that AI, you can feed anybody into it and make them naked or make them... Right. Whatever they want. Yeah, I know. It, 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 it's, it's one of those things where I, when I first start, before comedy... All I wanted to do was be able to have some kind of job or career that couldn't be taken over by robots. Back then, there wasn't even AI. Wasn't wow, even trying. That's why I became that, a huh? physical therapist because I was like, "Oh, I can do this." Like they'll always need people. But now AI absolutely is going to take over physical therapy. There's probably you could be able to put your Achilles in a machine and it'll do everything the therapist could do. Wow. And it's going to take over. Com it's already taken over comedy. AI generated well, like, crowd work clips. It's and like all a that. Massage, massage chair. A massage chair. That does what the physical therapist used it, to do. It can. But well, wait a minute. What are you saying? Comedy. How is it going to take over comedy and crowd work? Well, I'm saying a already you can do AI. You can do people do AI crowd work clips. You could do you could AI generate anything. Yeah. At, at the, whatever you want to do, you could type it in. We're going to do the new special AI crowd. <laughs> but he's going to say these girls. It's not really the girls naked. It's fake. Yeah, but the police still had to investigate because but it's it was not underage girls. Right, but the police, it looks so real that the, right, that, that's what we're saying, pimp, right? Like, it'll it's fool the police. their face and applying it to Like, I could put you in the scene of a crime, and it looks real oh. enough that the police will be like, you have to prove now. Oh, I guarantee you, somebody's going somebody's to get wrongfully convicted that because they just happen to be in the same place. But well, I hate them. to say it, but, but I was ahead of my time. When I was seven, my dream was to be invisible and then go into women's houses and watch them try on bras. There it is, folks. Wow. Very Animal House. There's the clip. Um, <laughs> there's the clip. But no I context. I didn't want to think about No that. context, Colin. <laughs> well, between the two of you, you're jerking off in a mirror. He's sneaking yeah, that was really... You combine those with AI. <laughs> At least I was seven during mine. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit... Yeah, that, my, I did that in Columbus last week. But it's so funny because I w when I would visualize it when I was seven, I didn't imagine women's tits. All I imagined was them in the bra like this. Right. It's crazy. That's all you wanted. Well, that's I was like, like a fetish. When I was a kid, the, the only thing I used to uh, I used to watch <laughs> over on repeat, Jamie Lee Curtis dancing around for Arnold Schwarzenegger in True Lies. That's all I needed was just the <laughs> slightest tip of the top, hint of the top of her nipple. That's what me, we would talk about in school. I remember going <laughs> back. <laughs> I went to St. I remember talking to all the boys in the back of class. Like, did you see the top of Jamie Lee Curtis's nipple? I got the VHS. My mom would be like, "Where you really love True Lies?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, I love you know." You look, you shouldn't find that VHS and throw it out. Too. I know, I'm a Schwarzenegger fan. <laughs> just smash that one too. Yeah, just smash it up. Um, Eagles fans get this is the most Eagles Philadelphia Eagles thing to do. Eagles fans get married in parking lot oh. tailgate before Cowboys oh. game. Oh, that's nice. That's great. That's nice. I was at your. Oh, wedding. there they I go. Was, there it is. That's beautiful. Look at that. It's. Beautiful thing. Pink yesterday has some balls on stage at Madison Square Garden. Eagles. She goes, by the way, the Eagles won today. People are like, Ugh. oh my God, what's her problem? Because she, she's pink. She could do anything. I know. She's, from, she's Philadelphia. She went to, uh, she's from like one of those towns, like, you know, Doylestown or one of these towns by the yeah. you know, King of Prussia Mall. Right. She's an All You Garbage fan, you know? Pink. <laughs> she probably is. Um, I, so, oh, so see, here, now that I'm actually. I do agree with Tom Papa. Now that I'm seeing the banner of your YouTube, you do look better clean shaven. God damn it. I mean, why I'm just looking at it. It looks nice. Why can't you leave a mustache on like Andrew Schultz? <laughs> Dude, you if you came out with Schultz's mustache and haircut, that would be that would break the internet, I think. <laughs> that would be I am curious. So when did Tom Papa say that? How long has this been in your head? Um No, but it didn't it didn't. It was in my head a little bit before that, to be honest. But when he said that, and it was like everybody laughed in a way where they're like, nobody was like, that's crazy. People were like, ha ha. Uh. Yeah. That was probably two months, maybe two months ago. Oh, it's been festering. Oh, it's been, f wow. Yeah. I, man, I really, I haven't gotten invited to that dinner in six <laughs> years. <laughs> now that's been festering. Has anyone? Let me ask you a question. Since I've been eliminated, has anyone else been tried out? Have you tried out Jared Freed? Have you tried out some of the other guys? You know, it's funny. I don't think Jared Freed's ever been tried out, but I feel like he would probably be good at it. But you, you know, I, you know, they had Ryan Hamilton once. You know, it didn't go well. I thought Ryan would kill because everybody loves Ryan, yeah. but he's a little too nice. Yes, and you have to be two things. You have to be. 
You have to be mean, but you also have to be loud. Because yes. it's a loud room. Yes. So even if you're funny, if you were like a Todd Barry, no people go, What? Right. Yeah. Right. So Todd doesn't get invited. Too too no. too low tone. You'd have to be uh Yeah, that's what I thought you'd I, I honestly if I had to bet, if I was a betting man, I would have bet on you. I think that, I think that, because because the, f I'm all about respect for the older guys. It's hard for me, even now. I've known you guys a long time. It's still hard for me to make fun. Like me and Mike Cannon will make fun of each other because we're you know the same sure age. of course. But the older guys, I'm like ah, I can't. First of all, anytime I you know Bobby yeah. Kelly yells at me once a month, <laughs> so I no, I can't make fun of him or even attempt to. But so I, I got that. And then, you know, Keith, I can't say anything to Jim and Jim, you know, and I laugh together, but I'm not going to, you know, like, like I remember when we were at that dinner, but the waiter came over and asked Jim what he wanted. And then, um, Bobby said he wants, um, snail shells, right? Just give him shells. Yeah. And it was funny. Yeah. And I was like, it was just a funny thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. But by the way, the special guest this time, usually it's a comedian. It was, we were downtown, we went to Nobu downtown, Ooh. which it really annoyed me. I don't like that kind of, I don't like that kind of food. And then the special guest was the waiter from the other place. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. A surprise guest. I love it. That I was don't, cool. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a Nobu guy. For me, if I'm going to go out to dinner, I want to just, I pr typically only want to go out to an Italian restaurant. Yeah. I want to eat sushi and things like that by myself. I don't want to go to dinner with that. Right. I don't know why. I have nothing against the Japanese. No. But, but even though we have a... I think know. I speak for the whole room when I say your dish you cooked last night sounded disgusting. It sounded like you took delicious <laughs> pasta and ruined it with cream cheese. I'm telling you, if, <laughs> if you bake it, though, onion chive cream cheese specifically. Ah, oh, it's even worse. And how about this? Then I took King Hawaiian slider rolls and I made a bacon, egg, and cheese with uh, a chipotle mayo for the kids. Oh. That was not. They ate that. They're starting to eat, Mike. I'm starting. Here's the problem, though. You ready for this? Yes. I'm starting to cook more now. Oh. And Jazz is starting to get mad at me because she's like, what are you taking my I cook? I was like, I thought it would be helpful in the right. kitchen. And she's like, why don't you just keep doing your bullshit comedy right. and sit there and I'll feed you. So you got to be careful. I like that. You got to be careful. She doesn't say bullshit comedy, does she? No, no, no. She's supportive yeah. of it now. All right. <laughs> no. She's supportive of it she's, now. She's coming around. She's coming around right now. She's coming around. She's, yeah. <laughs> She's coming around to it. I mean, you know, comedy's not for everybody. <laughs> My comedy's not for everybody. Who's her favorite comedian? Gabriel Iglesias? <laughs> yeah. Who is her favorite comedian? Um, who does she laugh at the most? I'm trying to think who she liked. Well, she liked her and her mom, I told you, love your New York story, especially oh, yeah. when you do the Puerto Rican bits. Yeah. Um, they like those. But I wonder who are, who is her actual favorite. Yeah, she probably doesn't tell you. No. Who did she want to uh, – she likes Sebastian a lot. She likes him. She likes Taylor Tomlinson. She's a Taylor Tomlinson She's now fan. hosting a hot new show. Yes. Yes, sir. CBS, late night. Congrats to her. Yeah. TT. Taylor that? Tomlinson. Yeah. That's it. I like Taylor Tomlinson. Yeah. I like um, – I like uh, – I don't know. I, I, I texted her, congrats on the show, and she wrote back, thanks. What, what more can you hope for? Yeah, that's it, what I guess. You know, look at this. Sweet Fishes Cafe in Thailand where the floor is filled with water and fish swim amongst the customers. What do you think of that? I actually like that idea. What do you mean? Wait a minute. Wait. It's, you're, you're saying like your feet are wet? Oh, I thought it was glass. That's no, stupid. No, anyone could do that. You no, gotta it's be like a there tsunami with, restaurant. You got to be there with the fish. What if somebody throws in a couple of um, piranha? Oh, yeah. Piranha. <laughs> Then suddenly they eat your toes. Yeah, ugh. I don't want that. I, I, um. That's why she, she went new comedy special. <laughs> what do you want to shoot your new comedy special? Where do you want to shoot it? I don't know. Maybe Long Island somewhere? Ooh, the Paramount? Oh. I like the Paramount. Hey, tonight, Monday Night Football, who do you got? The oh. Jets or the Chargers? The Jets, of course. You think the Jets, what's going to be the score? Because this episode roll. comes out Thursday, so I want to predict I don't know the how the Chargers are this year. Are they good? Chargers are three and four, I believe. Oh, and good. And Jets are they, four and three. Jet type team. Yeah. Um, I would say um, I would say the Jets are going to win. My first thought was 17 to three, but now I'm saying I don't want it to be such a boring game. 31-17 Jets. 31-17 Jets. This is on. This is hours before the Monday Night Football game. This episode comes out in three days. Whoa. So we're going to see. We're going to put your uh, prediction to the test. It is sad. Did you watch the Jets and Giants? This is the whole problem. 
if it was any other city, you'd be like, well, you know, it's a small town. They don't have the kind of money. We have the biggest market in the world, and our teams are so mediocre my whole life. I was 10 years old when Joe Namath led the Jets to the Super Bowl. Same year, the Mets won the World Series. The Knicks won the NBA. And I was like, this is probably how it's going to be most of my life. Champions. Right. Because New York. And ever since then, they all suck. I know. Mets had a couple of good years in there. That's about it. Hello, Fresh Baby. Hola, Fresca. America's number one meal kit. The holidays are right around the corner, and Hello, Fresh can help take the stress out of dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up tasty meals right to your door, saving you tons of time. The holiday season can be hectic, and that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes to get Delivery, just like always, HelloFresh's ingredients travel from the farm to your door so you know they are fresh and everything arrives pre-portioned so you can get right to cooking quick. HelloFresh, we use it with my family. We That's how we bond. We sit around. We cook. We love it. Right now, all you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabeFree and use the code HeyBabeFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabeFree with code HeyBabeFree. I mean, free breakfast for life. How can you go wrong? Go to the website, put in the promo code HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Let me tell you about the absolute best toothbrush I've ever had in my life. Quip, baby. Look at this. Hit that button. And we're brushing, folks. Quip toothbrush. I use it every day. It's great to travel because it has like this like plastic case that goes over it. That's awesome. Keeps my uh, toothbrush germ free. The, I love the vibration, the little sonic vibration on my teeth. It's amazing. You're going to want to use it on other parts of your body, but do not do that. This is only a toothbrush for your teeth, and it is awesome. Let me tell you about Quip. Good health starts with good habits, and Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials you need to care for your mouth. They also have these amazing mints, this tooth floss. Seriously, Quip is, and I love the toothpaste. It's so minty fresh, and I just feel like my teeth are cleaner. Wouldn't you say my teeth are looking better? Quip, baby. Quip is doing, from now on, my friends are going to start calling me Colin Quip. I love Quip so much. It is lightweight and sleek design. No wires, no bulky charges to weigh you down. Multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter. And it is, it really does. It looks awesome. Skip the batteries and snap into healthy habits with the new rechargeable electric toothbrush. All the features of the original Quip plus one magnetic charge powers up to three months of brushing. I never have to, I'm telling you, I barely charge this thing. I really do like stand by this product. This is the best toothbrush I've ever had. The water flosser, it hits all the right spots with gentle or deep clean pressure at the touch of a button, extra wide lid that fits right under the faucet and fills up in seconds. $7 replacement floss, uh, uh, floss tip shipped to you every three months to keep things flowing smoothly and prevent mineral deposits from building up. Every time you pop our new mints, you'll be caring for your mouth inside and out. Bold mint flavors keep your breath confidently fresh, and you'll get a boost of vitamin D. Here, look, I'll show you. I'll show you the mints right here. Look, these are the mints right here. Look at these. Unbelievable. These quip mints, and they're just, look, they pop right open like a Pez dispenser. It's fun, and the mints are so fresh. I love them, and you guys are going to get a great discount. All you do is you got to go to getquip.com slash heybabe right now, and you will get 20% off any electric toothbrush mint and gum dispenser or water flosser that's get quip.com slash hey babe right now that's 20 percent off any electric toothbrush mint and gum dispenser or water flosser at get quip.com slash hey babe that is g-e-t-q-u-i-p.com slash hey babe quip the good habits company what you're noticing is you're exhausted because of your child. You're not mad at each other. That's great. And you're not mad at the child. You're mad because you're not sleeping. So what It you sounds have to, like the new hour. There it is. So I said what you have to do now. You know what bugs me before we continue? Yes. Every time I say something, but it bugs me in a general. It's my own ego. When I go, that's a great idea for a joke. That's a great. You're like, yeah. And you just dismiss it immediately. <laughs> it infuriates me. Go on. Well, because I, the only jokes I get from, are from AI. AI generated material. Um, no, it is. I I, I I was thinking about doing a one-man show. Do you have any advice? Oh, lay off. You want that? Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, no, I think uh, I've, I've, me and Jasper were talking about that the other day. We were like, oh, yeah, we just – because 
couple of our friends now are starting to get divorced. It's starting to happen. Oh. You know, we're 39, 40, so divorce happens. And what's the common thing they all have in common? What's the commonality? They started together. They got together when they were in their late 20s. They were married, and now they have little kids, and now divorce. And we're like, now see, we we did that. We right. now now we could you can we could just go. But yes. we've almost like hardened against each other. Where we're like, yeah, I just That's know are, I know right. how to we know how to pick up each other's slack now. Right. You know when when now Except I know cooking. now I know exactly. <laughs> now I know when she's like when it's like a rough morning with the kids. I know now. Go change the baby. Go help get the school uniform right. out. Where I I never used to know that. I used to be like, that's her job. She's the woman. I do the comedy. But now I realize it's a great. You you just got through telling us she told you you do your comedy and I'll do the womanly things I cook. I know. I know. You're contradicting once in a while. yourself completely. Um, but this will be a great show. And you know another thing I noticed. It doesn't be a show. Just stand up for your act. Right. How could this not be? This is so interesting and insightful. You don't like my comments on Ukraine. What comments? On my, <laughs> my, <laughs> in my new hour. Yeah. What I, do you uh, say? Ukraine's out of, the, out of the loop now? I know. They are. I know. Move over, Ukraine. Yeah. Here comes Palestine. Yeah. Um, well, Treasure Island. Are you excited about that? Oh, it happened. Or, oh, no. It's no, happening this Friday. Week. I'm excited because... Tomorrow. This, show's, this episode comes out Thursday, right? Pimp's going to be there. At Treasure Island. Well, Pimp's not going to be at Treasure Island. He's at the other place. And so's our oh, oh, so. Tina and Tina and Amy, and also there's another big comedian is going to be there too. My God, see, yes. doing the arena. I don't uh, know. I think he's doing the win. I'm not sure. I love the win. You know, you've been doing the win. Now. I did the win two years ago, and then most recently I did the uh, uh, Cosmopolitan, and I did not. If you want to piss off Bagazzi, you should text me. Go, hey man, if you want any advice on the win, call me. <laughs> <laughs> So look, oh, you got a nice little run here. Key West Theater. You got uh, Fort Lauderdale. Ooh. See, a Florida weekend like that, Thursday, December 7th in Key West, and then Saturday, December 9th in Fort Lauderdale, that's something you bring your wife to. That's a nice Florida weekend. Um, Yeah, no. if, she, if she wants to draw. Well, she works, you know. Oh, Thursday. that's right. But I mean. Um, never been to Key West. No, me neither. You never been to Key West? My whole life. Wow. Are you excited about going? No, I'm going after Jimmy Buffett died. It's going to be a time, mourning period for them. Did Jimmy Buffett die? Yeah, he did a few weeks ago, a couple uh, months ago. R.I.P. Yeah. Margaritaville. He died, don't worry, before the show aired. He'll still be dead. Okay. <laughs> True. Um, I do have a question. As you uh, have been on the road for so long, is, does it get easier or do you always, is it always a chore? It's always when you... Think about going, and when you wake up to fly, you're like, what am I doing? I'm going to the same place, the same hotel. But then when you get there, you're like, and you go on stage, it's like, this is kind of fun. So it's all about the hotel. That's all that matters. Yes. The flights don't mean anything. It's the hotel. Do you, you have a nice hotel? Like that last hotel, Stewart, Florida, I was at. I wish I could have stayed there for three days. What was the hotel? It was just, it was called the Hutchinson Spa and Inn or something in Jensen Beach. And I walk in, I go, oh, my God, it smelled great. The room, the ocean's right there crashing. Uh, everything about it was just, you know what I mean? Do you, the lobby had a good snack area, you know. That's important. It's do great. you When you are on the road, do you leave the hotel? Are you a guy that like to walk around in the morning and be out all day? Or do you like to if just... If there's a town right there, I like to walk around. But I don't like to... No, I don't like to be out. I like to hang out in the hotel. You like to stay in the room a lot. Well, you no, said, not in the room, but just walk around the hotel. You like that, yeah. If it's a nice spa, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like being on a vacation. I know, yeah. I well, because I used to say, oh, you know, going on the road, it's like a, it's like a mini vacation. But now I realize that it's not true because you're, the whole day you're kind of consumed with what the hour is going to be at that night. Right. So you're That's not really what, relaxing. You don't relax, but it is kind of a good time to do writing and try to figure out the organization of it all. Right. Right. Yeah. I try. Man. I try, but I, I, I occupy myself too much. I get. I just always have to be out of the we room. Heard. I, that? I wake up, I occupy Wall Street. <laughs> I uh, I have to, oh look the the sweater the coffee stain dried. That's what good technology should, with Lululemon. No, you should. Look, see, doesn't stain. It's crazy. What do you think? Uh, I don't. Even, I wouldn't unless you said I wouldn't even know it exists. You know what else is making a big comeback? You ready for this? Carhartt. Carhartt making a huge comeback. I went to the Carhartt store in Detroit. Shout out Ryan from the Carhartt store. Gave me a 75% discount. <laughs> I bought my little one pink overalls, and then I bought myself a jean jacket. Big discount. Oh. Carhartt's coming back, and he said, he said, the Carhartt's coming back, and it's it's now everybody's wearing Carhartt, but nobody knows how to work with tools. 
That's a good point. Yeah, everyone's got the Carhartt stuff on. Nobody knows how to even light up a freaking chainsaw. Interesting, Land. Right? But it is. But that's what happens. Did you want to tell the Delilah story? Is that for air? I, I want to I say it's a funny story, but I just think, you know, with the, what the goals are, I can't. I'll tell Colin off air because it is a funny story. I wish that we could, but I also had another funny story, too, on uh, – Chrissy Chaos that we had to cut because it was oh. it was inside info it was inside info uh, story and then I asked the guy I asked the guy who I told the story about I said can I say this and he goes let me tell you something no and here's why and I'll tell you off the air oh no it's like a mob thing yeah hey unbelievable which one of my friends is uh, does mafia movies I like this you like that hey when we do the uh, I look like I'm play. having an active stroke. That, that picture. <laughs> when we do the yeah, that, that is a strange picture. It doesn't look like you, but yeah, it looks like Sal. Whoever did that is a fan of Sal. I um, know. The yeah. um, when we do the uh, Ridgewood uh, block by block, I can't wait. Well, you're saying that, but just think of all the stories you won't be able to tell because of mob related. Or, you know, let's face it, Rosinski, you can't make jokes about Rosinski. Well, Rosinski didn't grow up in Richard. He grew up in Ozone Park. If you want to do right. a block by block in Ozone Park, we'll do that on 101st do, Avenue. You won't be able to do it. I'll have to do it with Rosinski. Yeah, but I'll be there, you know, just kind of lingering. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, in Ozone Park? The uh, <laughs> I'll do a block by block with Patty. Uh, <laughs> Patty Flyballs? Well, then we got to go to Maspeth. <laughs> and Middle Village. Mas- middle Village, I meant to say. He's in Middle Village. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of... Uh, Ozone Park, did you see Get Gotti on Netflix, the three episodes? No. Get Gotti is one of the best Gotti uh, documentaries, John Gotti documentaries, because a lot of times, you know, we've seen the stories. We've we've heard, we know Castellano, he whacked Castellano, we know all that. Sure. But this one, this one, Get Gotti, this this, um, point of view of this documentary is about um, the struggle of trying to get Castellano. Uh, The building's testing alarms today. Oh, good. Perfect for a podcast. In some ways, it's good. It lets people realize it's live. It's, li- it's not live. AI. They, the fans won't even hear it. Probably won't even oh, hear okay. it. Okay. So with Get Gotti, they... I mean, this is sick. Yeah, we know. With, with Get Gotti, they... Um, this, this documentary is about the FBI, CIA, and the... I think like the New York State Detectives Department or something... Where how they they all were trying to investigate Gotti, and because each one of them was trying to get the credit because it was like a groundbreaking sure. case for them, what they did is they let Gotti slip away each time because they were rather than working together, they were working separate. But that's it's end of Brooklyn. Don't forget about the movie. The end of Brooklyn. That's a subplot. Is all the different agencies. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> but it's pretty funny. This this one, this this uh, prosecutor. I think her name is Jackaloni. She's. That How about this? Ready for terrible. this? Yeah. Imagine this. I know this. You know the story. Yeah. So they literally, this is one little spoiler here, but they're they're in court. Gotti's in court. Imagine this. You're John Gotti, okay? The infamous John Gotti. And then one of his best friends for 20 years, Willie Boy Johnson, was a rat, was an informant for her, Jack yeah. Loney. Nobody yeah. knew that. Nobody, Nobody knew it. that. And when you- Well, it wasn't for her. It was for the other, right? But it was her. It was her. It was like, yeah. It was, it was her agency she could deal with. Right. right. She, she had the access to the information. So in court, in front of everybody, doesn't even tell him, doesn't even tell her peers, she just outs Willie Boy Johnson in front of John Gotti. Yep. Like basically killed him in front. And then they said, you know, to her in the interview, they were like, wouldn't you, um, wh- like, you know, didn't you know that he was gonna that was gonna get him killed? She's like, well, he was leading a certain life. He was gonna die anyway. I'm like, no, that's almost like murder. You should be charged yeah. murder. Yeah. And then they shot Willie Boy Johnson three or four days later. They shot him no, five times. A couple time. of years later. Oh, a couple of years later? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was right after that. No, they waited, yeah. They shot him and they left him dead in his driveway, which in the mafia, if you kill somebody in front of their house, in front of their wife yeah. and kids, is a big sign of disrespect. And everybody knew John Gotti did it. Like everybody knew. And so they kill him, like they left him his body out. 20 minutes later, they're, they're at John Gotti's house, the news. And they go, what do you have to say? Did you, you know, uh, Willie yeah. Boy Johnson died? And he goes, whoa, I didn't hear. And then they right. were like, oh. And he goes, uh, do you have a comment? And he goes, we all got to go sometime. I remember and then that. walked away I remember and then just that. sat in the car. And I was like, wow. That's how, that's how powerful he was back then where it was like everybody knew you had something to do with it, but they could do nothing because you kept getting away. Well, that's the guy that we should interview. The guy, the first case when he first got famous – there was a guy named Roman in your neighborhood. Maybe we'll have to save that for uh, the Ridgewood block, block by, by block. block. 
Well, but anyway, he's a guy, a big Polish guy that lived around Ridgewood and Masspath, and he's double parked car. Oh yeah. He obviously had a temper, and he's smashing the horn, and Gotti and his guys come out, smack him. He had four hundred dollars in his pocket, pulled his money out, took his money, and then he went to court in the famous game. I forgot he. That was yes. what the post said. Yes. Because they go, did you 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 be prosecuted? Because he had them arrested, and he didn't realize. Somebody goes, that's John Gotti. Yeah, they, they they talk about that in the documentary. Yeah. I forgot it. I didn't realize that it was a uh, Ridgewood Maspeth guy. Yeah, it was oh, right. Uh, it was a Polish guy from maybe it was Greenpoint. It was one of those bars there, you know. Now I know Gary Veter had a stance on this doc because he said he can't watch a documentary that has reenactments at all. Why? I don't know. He said and this it, had reenactments? I guess so. No, it, I don't think this one had. Um, maybe it had a couple. I'm pretty sure he was talking about this one, but I don't know. It was interesting. It might have been. He hates I, reenactments. I feel like, um, well, most reenactments are badly done. That's what it is. So instead of complaining, get what doesn't Gary do? The, I hate to say another one of my show ideas was the, that's why we just so mad at Gary and his reenactments. It had reenactments, but it's filming scenes. For example, you could say Goodfellas is a reenactment. Interesting. You could. What does Gary Vita have to say about that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you where it's good reenactments. Colonial Williamsburg. That's a nice trip. <laughs> That's a nice trip. I went there once. I did a show there. Well, what about Mary College? What about our idea that we were supposed to go do shows around different Civil War battles? We were supposed to be on the yes. Colin and Christie Civil War tour. That's a good idea. We always especially told, nowadays. We told our guy Berkowitz, and then what did we get? No, we got nothing. That's a good idea, we especially got, now with the Civil War's coming. Let's do it. The Civil do War. Do you have series. time? When does your tour end? I'm ready. December 10th. Okay, I, I'm going to end sometime in February. Oh. Sometime. Well, I'm trying to get I'm it. ready. All right. Civil War reenactments. I like it. All right. Maybe I should keep the beard for the Civil War. I think I like that. Jeb Stewart. Oh, Jeb Stewart. Jeb Remember they used to have those little beards? Yes, li yeah, little, little cute little beards. They all kept those beards. <laughs> Did you have breakfast yet? No, I didn't. What are you going to go with today? I don't know. Maybe I'll go to Ole and Steen. I say, anybody been in lately? And they'll be like, yeah, one guy came in. He was out for number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to. Uh, yeah, I think I'm. I'm. I. I, I didn't eat. Now let me ask you something. A while. Down here, <laughs> do you take the E train? Yes. All right. To World Trade Center. So all I wanted to know. Long Island Railroad transfer at Penn to the E, or I could take the E the whole way. That's what I'm saying. The E is right downstairs. Yes. The only problem with the E is as. It's the last stop, so it's the homeless train because sometimes you get on, like I'll get on six thirty in the morning or something, and the all the homeless they they won't be bothered down here, and I'll get in the car and there'll be five homeless people sleeping, oh. and three of them just smell terrible, you smell know? horrific. I mean, Why do you take the east so early in the morning? What are, what is your early morning train? If I have business uptown or something, I have to do. I don't know. You got I'm, business that early uptown? Sometimes, yeah. What kind of business uptown that early? I don't know, doctors or, you know, Jim and Sam occasionally. <laughs> Jim and Sam. You know. Uh, Jim and Sam. I, I, I would like to do Jim and Sam. And see, it was such a chore to get to Sirius XM in the morning from Staten Island. But now that I'm living much closer, I'd like to do more Sirius XM stuff. It's going to be a breeze for you because you can literally, you don't have to leave underground. You get off, it's 4750 Rockefeller Plaza, walk right upstairs. Beautiful. Perfect. Get right. The only time I got to walk out of is to walk to the E train. What? Yeah, that's true. How about this? Now tell me. Switch it west forth. Tell me if 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 you if you would get creeped out by this as well. When I leave my building where I yeah. live now, sometimes I go. I leave very early. Sometimes at five o'clock in the morning. I try to get work out before the kids wake up. And when I walk out of my building, I turn left. Five thirty. Five a.m. Wow. I, I leave. Totally. Because the only way I can get any reading done or exercise done sometimes is before the children right. wake up. You just have to do it. Right. So, so I walk past this one spot where it was famous because it was where Sam, son of Sam, killed one of his first victims. Yeah. And Victoria, every time, what's her name? Yeah, he the shot tertiary. her through a, through a textbook. Yeah. And I young kid. That. And I and every time I walk past it, I like. I, I get creeped out. And now what I've been doing is I've been not walking past that spot. I've been crossing the street and then crossing back. Am, is that something? Am I being a, a little bitch for that? Or would you do the same thing? I mean, uh, I mean, Son of Sam's locked up. You don't have to worry about that. And you have the, uh, maybe it's because of that third hand connection with the Son of Sam that you have. Yes, that's true. Maybe it's some psychic Festering. energy coming in. 
When you're home alone, can you, do you sleep with all the lights off or does it creep you out? No, I like to have a light on because also you bump into shit. But I don't like sleeping when it's too dark. What about in a hotel room? Will you have a TV on at least? Will you, yeah, I always have a light on. I always have like the bathroom light on or something like that. But will you, will you turn the TV off? But the truth is, you shouldn't, if you're really worried about being killed in your sleep, you should have the lights off because then you and the killer are equal. If you're asleep and the lights on, they can see you. Right. So really the smart move is have all the lights off and sleep under the bed. Anytime we would hear a noise in our Staten Island house, it would be Jasmine who would go down and check. Well, I always, Jen thinks I'm crazy because I always have a giant, I have a, a giant butcher knife, an Afghani knife, and a hatchet by the bed. So then she's like, why do you always have those? I go, just because you never know. And then one time at 2 in the morning, our bell rang, and our door is right there next to I, it. I saw it was in your apartment. And I, right. So I, and that door is kind of shaky anyway. I opened the door with the knife like this. It was a delivery guy. Somebody gave him the wrong apartment. <laughs> He's like, ah. <laughs> At 2 a.m., somebody was getting him. food delivery. Yeah, somebody's, yeah, you know, a lot of kids in the building. They eat at 2 a.m., they're all stoned. And then uh, he's delivering at 2 a.m. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, are you actually superstitious about anything? Superstitious? Or like have rituals? Yeah. Well, before the, sh well, everybody says I, I didn't even notice it about myself, but I walk, I, I don't hit cracks. I try to walk on the street. So I'm like that, except when we're doing block by block. Then it all goes away. <laughs> but otherwise, if I'm walking by myself, I'm always. Trying not to hit the cracks. I never even think about it, but I'm always trying to step in the, and I count them the whole time. Right. That's OCD. It's not yeah, superstition. That, I, do you still walk with your keys in your hands like Wolverine? When no, but I'm night? always, you know what I mean? Like sometimes if I, if I, there's times I'll walk around. If I have like an athletic bag, I will put a knife in there sometimes. I'm fine. <laughs> just as a weapon, just to have it. Just to have it, just in case. Yeah, why not? Why not? You Because you never know when shit's about to. But, Knife combat seems strenuous. It does. But if you're in the train and you're like, please just take the wall. Just let me leave my, my hoodie. I just need it. <laughs> blah! Fucking stab him. Well, how about Halloween? I was doing trick-or-treating the other day. Yeah. We went trick-or-treating the whole the whole day. Me and this and you know my kids and this other couple of their kids. And I'm talking to the guy. We've been with each other for three and a half hours, four hours already. He goes, uh, I was like, man, there's so many people. Out like I was like you know if somebody wanted to pop off right now terror or something like that yes. and he goes he goes well yeah that's why I have my gun on me I said oh. you've had a gun on you this whole time he goes the whole time I don't leave my house without my gun I was like wow you would walk past this guy never realize he has a freaking gun on him and he's a law enforcement guy X yeah or well, retired right so he has the well, gun because law enforcement though they're allowed they're required to carry their gun the rest of their life yeah yeah I think this I think it's le legally they're supposed to yeah because if God forbid you lost your gun and you have so made so many guys you arrested. I had a friend, I remember one time we were in Florida, and he's like, we're talking about that, and he goes, I can't really walk around relaxed by the, that beach. I go, why not? He goes, you know how many people I arrested? This, he goes, this guy's that got out that were in for 12 years. They, they just goes, hate they, you. They hate me, you know? He goes, they'll kill me just because right. I put them in jail. Right. Yeah, I know. I think about that. But that's why. How many, how many audience members you crowd worked and insulted? A few. Oh, my God. This is our new movie. Crowd work. A guy that does crowd work insults people, and then one of them holds a grudge and kills him. And kills him. Yeah, or, or, or like that movie, The Fan with Robert De Niro, how when he winds up killing, uh, uh, tries to kill um, the San Wesley Francisco Snipes. Wesley Snipes. Maybe that's what it is. I'm like, we've got like a deranged fan, and I'm Wesley Snipes. Let me ask you this. Did you really feel compelled to rewrite in public on the podcast my new original idea? <laughs> Not only putting it back to an already done idea, but then going, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or maybe the original idea I just came up with. Maybe that's what it is. What do you think? We're in a goddamn pitch meeting? You're the executive? What if it's De Niro and Wesley Snipes? Thank you. <laughs> well, this is the point. This is a problem with podcasting. We talk too much. What's that? This is the problem yeah, with podcasting. Yeah, somebody's going to seal this idea now. Exactly. And they're going to redo it. Yeah, they're going to take both of it. They're going to take my brilliant original idea and steal the template AI of that screenplay, the fan, and rewrite it and make it a big hit. Yep. Mass. And who's going to play that crowd well comedian? Not you, Matt Reif. Yes. <laughs> he deserves it. Sam Morrill, Hulu presents Sam Morrill, Matt Reif, and Taylor Tomlinson in The Crowd Worker. <laughs> Love it. Go see him tomorrow in Florida. CQ, baby. I'm not in Florida tomorrow. I'm in Vegas. Vegas tomorrow, Florida the following week. Treasure Island. Go see me, then see Tina and Amy, and then see Nate Bargatze. All in one night. <laughs> Stagger it.
<laughs> 20 minutes each show. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Treasure w- Island. Now, do you like that? Are you looking forward to that? Do you like their hotel? What hotel? Treasure Vegas? Island? Yeah. I haven't been to Treasure Island Hotel. What's the last time you've been to Las Vegas? What's that? The last time you might have been to well, Las Vegas, I was with you, you and I, when yeah. you spun the uh, the wheel for the Vegas Nights. Yes. And they won that night. That's right. And we, you and I wore the same shirt. <laughs> we it was did. very embarrassing on morning radio. <laughs> I mean, a morning we television. We did a comedy cellar. Yes. Have you been back there? And TT was with us, too. Yes. Uh, Taylor uh, Tomlinson. Taylor Tomlinson, which, and you know what? And I know now Taylor Tomlinson now, because remember, she wouldn't, everybody else was hanging out, having breakfast, but she was doing her own thing. Yeah. And everyone was like, who, who she think she is? Well, now I know who she is. She's this late night host of CBS show, because she was like, I'm not going to get polluted with your guys' dumb ideas. I'm doing my own thing. And she's a star now. And we're just here. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um... Who else was with us? Mike Vecchione. Remember, he was sick. He had a stomach yes. virus. He said, oh, it's from the vegetables. I said, it's from the steroids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Cannon. Which do you think makes me older? The white beard or that laugh I just gave? It was a yeah. wheeze. <laughs> uh, Mike Cannon. Mike Cannon was there. Liz. Uh, Liz, of course. Liz Furiati, the best. Yeah. And that was and, a good show. And uh, it was a great show. Although, honestly, Vegas and me, you know, I literally write... Material for them, and they're still like, yeah, they can take me and leave me. Vegas, it's, it infuriates me. Yeah, I think because Vegas is, they're not really in the mood to. They're they're doing other things in Vegas. What's the best? What? I think the best comedy town is Boston. In the mood to what? <laughs> they're in the mood to gamble and fornicate. I'm making jokes about gambling. They don't like. It. They don't want to do it because what if some of them just lost their money? But I'm not mocking them. It's not my crowd work. Hey, uh, Macarena. How about that? Wait, that's. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it happens. We're in Vegas, and somebody crowd works and mocks a guy who just lost money. And then they... This is the plot. Then he has motivation. So the fans are like, I hate him. He's a psycho. But eh, when you lose money, it hurts. Right. Because they made fun of him, and they didn't even oh, realize. This is a good plot. Somebody like the Robin Williams it. movie. Which one? The car, car salesman? The one no way he photographs everybody? Oh, yeah. One That's, hour photo. What is, one hour photo. What does that have to do with it? I don't know. I just wanted to make some type of... <laughs> Movie reference again. I'll tell you, that wasn't a bad movie. Wesley Snipes joke, but I, I didn't, you know. That I wasn't a bit of a movie. I, I, Robin Williams put out great movies. Hook, you know, amazing. Yeah, there's right. also a lot of bad ones. <laughs> I'll be in Florida tomorrow, Dania Beach. Oh, Dania Beach. I got two shows tomorrow. Two Daniel shows Highlight. Saturday. You should stop by the Highlight place. I went to Daniel Highlight once. What's Daniel Highlight? Yeah, Daniel Highlight. Highlight. What is that? Highlight. You know the game Highlight. They play that Portuguese like. Basque game. You know, you guys never heard of Highlight? Highlight game? Highlight? Highlight. J I J A I A L A I. Highlight. I only play Mahjong. No, no, it's a game. It's like that game. Highlight. People bet on it. Oh, okay. And you 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 played in Dania? And people bet on it all the time. How'd you do? It was funny. I didn't play. I was just there losing money. But then I was with my friend Mike, and we met this kid, Gypsy Eric, was a gypsy that Mike knew. (laughs) And we're talking to him, and, and Mike goes, yeah, these guys, they drive around, then they run into, they have this old Mercedes, and they run into people's Mercedes, and they go, oh, my God, you ruined my Mercedes, and they make people pay them. And I go, oh, that's crazy, with Gypsy Eric. I met him literally that night for two seconds. Two years later, I'm in L.A., on the other side of the country. I'm pulling into my dry cleaner, and just then I see a crash with a Mercedes, and out of the car comes Gypsy Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I go, hey. He's like, hey. He's like, trying not to talk to me. He's trying to do business. Right. Isn't that a weird coincidence? Gypsy Eric, not to be confused with. Well, we'll bleep that out, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, no, I was, I was saying. I was Wait, saying, here's a new it plot. It was in the block by block episode. Here's a new plot. It's not in the block by block episode, I think. Here's the new plot. Oh, that whole Let's thing was edited out? Uh, okay. So homeless. got to edit that out. What was the whole reason we talking about? It. Now, now it's going to edit out my whole boring Gypsy Eric story. And what's it? Now, the new plot. Let's say a guy like Homeless wants you dead. How does he kill you? You, you could go to jail if you poison him. If you shoot him, you go to jail. If you push him on a window. So a podcast producer killing the host? Yes. That's good. And he does it by not editing out something like that. And then they have a whole trial like, did you know? Like, is that murder? If he didn't edit out that thing and you got murdered? Ah, interesting. I like that. That's a I like that. Finally, he, I came up with something he's not fucking rearranging. This whole podcast, <laughs> if anyone has the trouble to look at the whole thing, is me throwing out 
good ideas, and you're going and just making this face at me, like, and then just changing the subject, which is fine. I get it. <laughs> you know, you get to a certain age, the wisdom in the white beard. <laughs> the white beard. <laughs> All right, let's go get a tea. Yeah. I owe you one tea. <laughs> tea. This, uh, this cheap son of a bitch was talking about, I can't wait to indulge in a giant lunch, a sumptuous feast. And he's like, All right, we'll get you a tea. We'll get you a tea. I got a haircut. I got to go. I gotta, oh, I gotta go where do you go? Manhattan? No, Queens. Where? The uh, uh, old place. Rush. It's he's a um, Israeli barber actually. Oh, but just to shape up, I got to grow my hair out. Got a big movie. Oh, that's right. Though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got to grow my hair Wait, out. Wait, that's when I'll have to take over the podcast. But I'm not only was saying on Vesey Street, none of it moves to Joe DeRosa's. <laughs> what yes. are you going to do? Who's going to re replace you for two months? You just got through telling the fans. You know, podcasts, people rely on seeing it every week. And they're like, by the way, going to a movie. See you guys in about three months. Whatever. Whatever. No, I mean, we'll, we'll have to uh, we'll bank the episodes. That's going to be crazy. Maybe you can do them on the set. Bam, I don't know, though. No, you got to But focus. if they film it all the way across the country. Oh, they're going to film it in, the, in the, maybe Vancouver. Oh. I would like for it to be in New York or New Jersey. That would be <laughs> that would be great. But I have no pull. No. And you know what? A little time away from the family. You're like, you you. You and Jazz are like uh, David Beckham and Posh. Yes. We've been compared to that. See? Yes. The Puerto Rican Spice Girl. Did you watch that documentary, David Beckham and Posh? Her name would be Adobo. It was good, right? So good. Really good. I thought it was going to be... Better than no Get Gotti? What's that? They love. They love each other. Are they, they still really love? did. Here's the thing about Beckham. She's right. <laughs> Beckham was this handsome guy. He literally was such a good guy that he... You know, girls were throwing themselves at him his whole life. He cheated once, and you could see it was like he was traumatized by it. That's it's what nice. every girl wants. Yeah, but now they're together still. Beautiful. That's it. All right, Colin. I, I just I don't understand. Even that last moment, I really don't understand. You know what? I'm going to Ole and Steen. I'm just going to sit in the window and watch you get your hair. Watch you go to the E train. <laughs> and be like, man, that guy needs a haircut. <laughs> All right. See you Bye. later. Bye. Uh, uh, don't be a fake. Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid.